I am an innovative artist and designer using machines and earth. And I've been thinking lately as to how we can change the way that we conceive public space. Apparently, I'm a professional risk taker as well. This was shot last Sunday in New Jersey while riding with some of my friends. And I played this video today to, it was relevant to me um, in today's theme, stasis. Sometimes in life it feels as though we are sliding headfirst down a track at over 100 miles per hour. And while you're listening along to what I share with you, I'd like to encourage you to ask yourself what you could do in your everyday life. Whatever it is that you do, how could you add creativity to that or artistry? Or better yet, how could you become the artist of your life? Furthermore, how could you bring the ideas that you have in your head to fruition? Those crazy good ideas. Everybody has one, at least one. Imagine you are the artist of your life. You could paint whatever you like. So, my story begins. I was born in San Diego and grew up in Montana. And there, my father had heavy machinery. So growing up, my younger brother and I were always encouraged to jump on the heavy machinery. And he would put us on his lap and teach us how to use the machines, showing us how they would move. And instantly, I was intrigued on how the machines actually worked, their enormity, and also how they could lend themselves to us. There was a big responsibility within the machines as well, and I liked that as well. As long as I can remember, as being a youngster, I always created and sculpted and built and constructed. But that was until I found out about motorcycles, another form of machine, in a sense. My best friend introduced to me motocross, and it was there I learned life's first lesson, commitment. Racing quickly took over my entire life, and to follow was a long list of injuries, every mother's dream. While being injured, I often came back to creativity. So I'd find myself laid up with broken legs or arms, concussions, whatever it may be, creating. In fact, one time while I was laid up, I created an entire company to go and build the tracks, the very tracks that I was riding with the machines. So I would build motocross and supercross tracks all over the country. And during my travels, I realized that I had something much different that I wanted to pursue. So I packed up my things and I moved here to Southampton, New York in 2012. It was here that I would start my company, Earthworks. Earthworks was a, a land-based company, a machine company. We would spend our days basically leveling and shaping the earth, sculpting the earth, doing residential and commercial projects, demolishing beautiful Hampton homes, taking part in environmental restoration projects, coastline repair, river restoration. We literally became everything earth and dirt. There was also a very large underlying aspect to Earthworks. We had a big interest in art. You see, earlier on, I actually had this crazy dream in the middle of the night. So I grabbed my sketchbook and I began to sketch this wild idea that I had. I had this idea that I would actually take my machine and I'd fabricate paintbrushes and squeegees to the excavator. So I began to learn what others had done before me, not painting with an excavator, but other painters and artists. And while I was exploring what others had done, I found that I was much more intrigued and um, enlightened by the people that were actually in, around me, the artists that I actually knew, the people that I would talk to. They were so persistent and committed to their process, and that was ultimately something I was familiar with from my racing days. So, I took to canvas with my 44,000-pound excavator. With paintbrushes and squeegees I fabricated, I began to push and pull the paint across the canvas, creating large, abstract works. My focus became immediately to hone in on creating three-dimensional realm within the work while being limited to the two-dimensional movement of the machine. There was an immediate duality to what I, was, what I was experiencing in this very moment. 
between my racing life and now my painting and artistry life. There is this self-awareness, and there was also this intense focus and situational awareness, and this is where I really thrived. My work evolved, and now instead of just painting with my excavator, I began to sculpt. Taking large steel beams from demolition projects, I would take the steel and begin to twist them and bend them with the machine. The machine became an extension of me. And once I got the shape that I was desiring with the steel, I would take them into the paint booth to be prepped and um, sprayed for paint. Well, while prepping, I actually found that some of the steel had stamps on them with Carnegie stamped on the side. So, I painted all of them vintage Ferrari colors. Why not? The work I was doing began to yet evolve again. This time, making full circle back to the earth, I would begin to create large-scale, sustainable and functional earthworks installations. Spending lots of time in big cities really started getting me thinking, how can we change the way that we conceive public space? What does that look like? How can we create in a way that we have not yet? Would that be undulating berms, 20 feet tall, creating bioswells with a rich diversity of plant life that could help mitigate water quality issues, creating large retention ponds that would act as reflection pools, and before the water would slowly percolate down, it would remind us that water is a valuable resource. It would become a place to learn, a place to educate, a place to grow, perform, to discuss ideas or memories. Imagine we could collect our rainwater and repurpose it, and then irrigate our, our land using solar energy and some of the newer practices that we only hear every now and again. In this application, we actually even explored putting in oyster reefs for water quality management down, down towards the water, which is just, just now being talked about. As you can imagine, this comes with many more layers of any painting that I've ever done. I call this the art of getting to the canvas. But it's, again, commitment that wins. And I shared with you my experience today because I felt it was relevant. You see, at the beginning of the year, I actually wrote down a few things that I wanted to accomplish. And one of them was giving a TED Talk. <laughs> but as you can see, or as you may know, rather, I hope you don't see it, these things don't come at times that you would expect them. And in fact, last weekend, as I was sliding on my face down the track, I thought to myself, maybe I won't be giving a TED Talk. <laughs> the point is, is that life throws things in your way, hilariously sometimes. But what I did was merely add a little dash of creativity to what I was doing. And it opened up everything things that I didn't even know existed. So I ask each and every one of you to reflect on your own situation and what it is that you do. And what would happen if you added creativity or you became the artist of your life? Thank you.